I'm, I'm Jim McAndrew with uh, USGS. I work on the National Map a website, uh, nationalmap.gov. We also have a, a volunteer branch of that called the National Map Corps. Um, so I'm going to go over a lot of stuff. I'm going to try to do it quickly. So hopefully uh, you guys have some good questions at the end. But I'm going to go with history, where we've been, what we're doing now, and what we want to do in the future. Uh, one main point I want to take away is that we're using the uh, OpenStreetMap platform for ourselves to do volunteer mapping. We are using the uh, GeoNames database. I don't know if anyone's used that, but I'm sure some have. And we are trying to crowdsource what happens with that database and bring it back to database. So the history is we had VGI with paper maps at one point, and we had people physically marking where the points were, sending them back to the USGS, having them uh, go through the volunteer process and validate it by actual government workers. That project progressed through a few different iterations until funding ran out in 2006. And we had 22,000 structures at one point, so it wasn't too bad. But it got suspended in 2008, and they brought it back as the current National Map Corps. Um, it's available in a lot of states. It will be available in California on June 18th, as well as all these other states. And that's kind of a map of where you can map right now if you go to navigator.er.usgs.gov. And we're collecting 10 different points. And that makes it a lot easier than some projects where you just want to have everything. And we're just trying to simplify it so we have these few things. Uh, let's see. And we use the Ruby on Rails, uh, what's it called, Ruby port for the OpenStreetMap platform. Uh, we don't use PostGIS. Everything's in uh, Postgres, and everything is a key value. Uh, that's just the back end of how OpenStreetMap is. And we are using Potlatch 2 for our mapping. We run it on a Linux server. Uh, that's the link, navigator.er.usgs.gov. Uh, and we broke it into four different projects, where it's the main Navigator website, the Potlatch editors, which we have four different editors, uh, the tile cache service, and a separate web help system to guide people through it and teach them about our different gamification methods and other kind of things we do. So the four potlatch editors we're using are the, just the normal standard one. Uh, we have one called AAQ, which is adopt a quad. And we have one that we call QA, which is this quality assurance. And we also have a trails one that we are working on that will allow you to do lines. Right now, we only do point data. And it, it's just pretty much a copy of the OpenStreetMap potlatch editor. And we've been working on it for about a year, and it works pretty well. So this is what our editor looks like, and hopefully I can bring it up, there it goes. Let's see if I can get it to work. Maybe not. Well, this one worked. <laughs> there it is. It is using Flash, which is a major problem with it, but that is what Potlatch is right now. So there, we added a little logo to the front of it. It doesn't work as well as you expect on these small screens, but let's see. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure how to close the window. There it is. So you can see we have the 10 different points you can add. And if I find a location with points, we can show that we disabled the, the advanced screen so you don't have access to add anything external. 
you can just add these 10 points. And I'll go back to the process we're using. So the process is that we take all this information from geonames, pull it into our internal OpenStreetMap database. We bring that out to volunteer editors where everybody on Earth is allowed to edit. That goes to another step called adopt a quad, where only certain people that have been proven editors in that area can agree that this area is all correct. Once they agree on an area as being correct, they move it up to the uh, QA process where actual USGS employees come through and make sure the data is correct. It goes back into the GeoNames database and eventually it'll show up down on the national map. And this is kind of how the adapt the quad process works. This is in Colorado. And Colorado's pretty much done its phase and we're doing iterative phases where we open it up for users to go in and map. Then they go through this adapt the quad process where users their users can still map, but their contributions are not added anymore until the next round. And then after that, we go through a final, we go through QA, and then we go through the final process. And you can see a lot of Denver's already finished right now and going to be opening up soon for the next round of the process. So we also have volunteer recognition. So, and this is proven to be pretty interesting when going to schools and uh, teaching like, students how to do this. They really like to you know, see how many points they can get. And this is up to uh, 500 nodes that you add. And we've had a lot of success with people doing this, so we had to add a couple more. I think the numbers are a little off on this one, but <laughs> at least the 2,000 plus is correct. Um, and whenever you get each of these awards, we tweet it on the uh, USGS TNM uh, Twitter account. And that's only if you want it to be. We have, we're a government agency, so it's, you know, private, or private information that people don't really want to share, maybe. But if you agree to it, it can be tweeted. And this shows the same problem that OpenStreetMap has where, uh, I know you can't read any of the things on it, but those are all usernames at the bottom. And the chart is how many contributions they've done. So you can see one person all the way on the right has done far more than a lot of other people on there. Uh, so we've done a lot of measuring metrics of how well this project's actually working. And this shows just how many points we've had modified, how many have been verified through our verification process. And then after that, we see how many have been uh, just added or just been contributed through all these different processes. And I think it's pretty cool that the total contributions down here uh, have, at least for uh, the calculated uh, volunteer contributions for each for all the phases, has been 6,830. So we have a lot of points coming in, and this is only through March 31st, and we opened up uh, nationwide since then. So the next time they do a report like this, it'll hopefully be really good. And this shows just the contributions that have come in. I always like these graphs because they constantly go up. There's no way for it ever to go down. Uh, <laughs> but it, you can see after the uh, nationwide release on April 1st, we have started going up at a slightly faster rate. So that's pretty cool. And this shows that we have been, this shows, I guess, the accuracy and correctness of all the points. And we have errors of, you know, of omission where you forget to point on, put a point on. You have errors of commission where they put a point in that doesn't really exist. And we have just the uh, studies on each of these things. And we have gotten pretty close on AAQ stuff, the adopt -the quad to getting 100% complete on some of those, which is pretty cool. And we've shown that our accuracy after going through all of this process and then going back and doing a field check is very accurate. Uh, our numbers were showing 99% for a lot of areas. And this kind of just shows more about that, where the completeness and adopt a quad and everything is really great. But some of, you can see at the bottom, 
where completeness for Gaz, which is GeoNames, Gazetteer, is below 60% originally. And after we get through the adopt the quad state, it goes all the way up to the end. So, sure. All right. So anyway, I want to go into the next steps of the future of this. Uh, we are adding new features all the time. And we put everything into our own internal Git solutions so that we can take everything that is added to the Rails port and the Potlatch projects, and we can bring it back and just run merges on it. Uh, we want to keep the Navigator platforms all updated. We want to work on making new Potlatch editors or other editors for people. And since we use the same Rails port for the, for the entire application, we can connect any of the editors that are out there. And we also want to look at getting our data back out into OpenStreetMap, which is kind of the next big thing that everybody's trying to do and no one really has a good answer on. Uh, so the objective, again, is just taking the National Map Core information and putting it out there into the OpenStreetMap project. And that way, uh, users that are not familiar with the National Map Core, they don't have to figure it out. They can just get the information directly from OpenStreetMap. And the other thing is that OpenStreetMap does have, at one point, somebody imported all the geo names to begin with. So that information is already out there in OpenStreetMap. It was originally public domain data that was imported to OpenStreetMap. And if we make changes on it, we don't have any real reason or legal obligation to do it, but since we have better data now, we would like to update what's out there. So I guess the goal is that we want users to be confident that when they're adding data to the national map system, that it's not only going to be locked into just the government system, it's going to be accessible publicly through the public domain data and also through something like OpenStreetMap, which is a great way for people to get information. And I see the technical issues being there's going to be a lot of data that has been deleted out of OpenStreetMap or they've moved it around and it's also been moved in the national map uh, software. So you're going to see problems where you can't just do an automatic conflation on it. And one thing that I've been looking at using is Map Roulette to take two separate uh, points and asking users or crowd, just crowdsource that out and see which ends up being the correct point. Um, and an even bigger issue that I find with this is not technical at all, but it's social. We have this large community and everybody has their own opinion about imports. And it is very hard to just say, oh, we have this great data set, guys. We want to overwrite yours. So we really need to work on what we can do to make sure everybody's happy and make sure the data gets in there correctly and people use it and they like it and that everybody's happy. So that just really means we have to find the people who care the most and who have done a lot with it and work with them. So this is how we, at least I envision the project to go, where after it goes through all of the validation, then we kick it back to OpenStreetMap. And this is just a slightly modified version of the other one where I stuck OpenStreetMap also at the bottom. So before I go into questions, I do want to show this map, which shows all of our volunteer edits. And this was a pilot program in Colorado, so Colorado is mostly finished at this point and will probably phase back fairly soon. And you can see already there's people editing, especially coastal Oregon, and I know New York had a bunch. But, and everything green is just edited. You can see in Colorado we've gone through the phases where uh, red, I believe, I'm not gonna make up stuff here. That's not good. It's unavailable. I don't know. I think red is adopt a quad, and <laughs> this is a demo service that we just put up over the weekend, so. You can see that at the top, actually. Uh, so that just shows the progress that we've had so far. And we hope that in the next few months, every state's going to look like Colorado on this map. All right. So I hope I didn't go too fast on that. So I'm sure there's going to be some questions. So yeah, all the way in the back.
Uh, well, the national map itself does have the ability to download and view tiles from the US topo maps. So you can go into viewer.nationalmap.gov and download US topo, but it's not in a vector format. It is just rasterized. There are ways to get the vector format out, but I don't know how to do it through the national map. Well, this information is specific to the GeoNames project. So if they, I think in the end, the Topo project does want to use this information after it goes through the Gazetteer and back into that phase. And I believe Topo maps are produced, um, I think it's six years maybe. But when they get produced, that's when they're going to take a snapshot of the data. And that's what whatever's in the Gazetteer at the time is what's going to show up on those Topo maps. Yeah. Yeah, there's no plans to update that. What we're specifically doing with this National Map Core project is we take the tiles from the the National Map the TNM servers and we cache them ourselves and then for any zoom level that's higher or zoomed in more than 14 we have our own internal cache that's run on that server, and we refresh that periodically based on uh, settings, and we use tile cache to do that. So no, there's not going to be something like that, because that's going to take a lot of space. That's really the answer. Yeah? No changes have been made to OpenStreetMap at this at this point, and we really would like to do that, but that has not been done yet. Yes? Uh, definitely. We started with a Trails potlatch editor that now does line features. That is, uh, we think that using just points to start with has made this project a lot easier to push through different channels and really show completeness and just makes it easier for everything. And we wanted to prove that it could make sense and work in the minimal format before starting to say, OK, guys, look how well this works. Now can we go to lines and hopefully to polygons? But that's kind of just a political process of proving that it works before we can really move on and do the right thing. So, yeah. So anything else? Yeah. Well, you can, right now, the way that you can do it is go into the National Map Corps website, which I should have put on this last slide, but it's navigator.er.usgs.gov. That's ER for Eastern Region. And you can go back in there and move the points to wherever you think they're supposed to be. And that will go through the validation process. And right now, the validation process in Colorado is quick because we had a small area, but since we're getting larger and larger, it's going to be dependent on each state, so, yeah. Yeah, it, you can change the type, you can move the point. Uh, we only work with 10 different point types, just because they're the priority. The 10 points that we have are actually the points that are printed on the topo maps that come out periodically from the USGS, so that's why they are the highest priority. A lot of other things just don't show up on print maps, so. All right. All right, cool. Well, thanks, everybody. <laughs>